You've got a new book project. Yes. Day Trading Attention. Yes. You've done six business books before this, mm -hmm. right? So why was this a rabbit hole that you decided to go down? It's the biggest conversation I see that's universal. Mm. Whether you are a nonprofit, whether you're running for mayor, whether you are running a small business, whether you're the CEO of a big company, a creator, an influencer, everyone is trying to figure out how to create demand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like everyone's, you know, when I, when I say everyone's selling something, I don't see that as a negative. I mean, everyone's trying to communicate something that matters to them. I think selling is very good when you believe in what you're selling. I think if you're part of a nonprofit curing a disease, that is incredibly good selling. And I also don't begrudge someone who's trying to sell lollipops. I did that in sixth grade. Like everything's allowed as long as you're doing it the right way. And so um, I believe that the world of marketing and communication has made a very aggressive turn. And I think people are struggling and wasting money on traditional and digital. Mm. You know, I don't think, you know, I don't think this is a digital versus traditional thing. I think that I know because I live in it every day, you can waste an ungodly amount of money on influencers, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Spotify, um, just as easily as you can in a newspaper or billboard or radio. Yeah. And so I think the craft of being great at storytelling, running ads, creating content for the modern internet, being prepared for the AR, VR world of the next decade, the framework that makes sense to me is day trading attention. Meaning, whether it's a Super Bowl ad, which I think is underpriced for Fortune 500, or it's a carousel ad on you know, Instagram or LinkedIn, or it's an emerging influencer on TikTok to make content for your local car wash business, or SaaS business that's selling to Fortune 500 companies on LinkedIn, I think the nuances of communication and marketing have become so profoundly challenging that most people are really struggling. And I'm very fortunate to be sitting in the eye of the storm. And I always get most excited when I think I'm writing a book that is gonna lead to tens of thousands of emails of thank you. And I've written a couple of those and I know what they feel like versus the other ones I've written that have less thank yous. I think this one's gonna be a big one. I think it's a follow-up to Jab, 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 Right Hook, which was a big book that I wrote in 2013 that yeah, said this is how you do content on social media. This one is probably the nerdiest book I've ever written. It's like even, I'm a little worried that it may not be as commercially successful because it is a little textbooky. On the flip side, that's what might make it very commercially successful. So it's, it, I definitely pushed myself to go further into like going behind the, the cloak of like, what I do for a living, what we do for a living, mm -hmm. why a lot of things work for me. I'm proud of that. I, wh what I mean by that is someone said something to me six or seven years ago that really felt nice. It was like, I remember it hit me right in my chest. She didn't know me very well. She hung out in this business meeting and then went out and, it, and she said, you're incredibly intellectually generous. Mm. And I, uh, I was very flattered by that. And I feel like this book is intellectually generous. I feel like I'm writing a book of the secret sauce that makes most of my stuff work. And I'm excited that, that people are gonna take that baton and be able to build for themselves. And, and if I'm hearing, I mean, there's so many ways to reach people now, so yes. many more ways than ever. Yes. And it sounds like you're saying that people feel like, oh, I have to cover all the bases, as opposed to looking at each one of the, as a marketplace and figuring out what the right opportunity is for you, for your brand, for your message at that moment. Period. That that if you're if you're like, there's just so many examples I can give. If you are a florist, Instagram feels incredibly natural because a lot of people are there, but it's also hard right now. The supply and demand of attention on Instagram makes it challenging. Yeah. Meanwhile, I know the cliche the average, the typical florist is not thinking about LinkedIn. Meanwhile, LinkedIn is acting like Facebook in 2015, where on LinkedIn, if you post about floral arrangements or why you're a good option for a corporate floral or just a one-off Valentine's Day thing, it is more likely that you will get organic reach on LinkedIn than, huh. than Instagram. I know that 99.9% .9 of the people listening to this podcast would not believe that to be true, but I know it to be true. And there's a hundred other things I'm thinking about or know to be true, and so I'm gonna use this book to lay that out, but also get people into the right mindset, which is there's attention and there's filling that attention. This podcast, mm -hmm. 
everyone who listens to it is gonna listen to me right now. The variable of success for me and for you is the words that come out of my mouth. The creative is the variable. <laughs> if I give sharp insights, if I give things that bring people value, they will feel better towards me, right? Uh, so I think people are thinking about all these social networks as distribution, but not thinking about filling them with something that actually works. I believe that people are mainly mailing in the content. It's inherently selfish. Look at me, follow me, buy from me. It's incredibly repetitive. I look at brands and people every day, they're saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. That's grounded in selfishness. And so I don't think people are strategic. I don't think they understand the science around the art mm. of making a picture or video work for you in YouTube, YouTube Shorts, Facebook, Facebook Reels, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, WhatsApp channel, Instagram channel, these are new things, broadcast channels, the carousel ad, the video, the real versus the regular post, LinkedIn versus Twitter, Twitter versus Snapchat. Snapchat discovery is where a lot of creators should be making content, but they're only making it on Instagram and TikTok. So in a lot of ways, the books I've been writing for the last almost two decades, I feel like this is the 301 course. Mm. And um, I'm really, you probably can sense it, I'm really proud of it. It was really harder for me. I always am so ahead of things that I can just spit it. But this one I wanted to like, real, like I'm dreaming of someone right now who's listening to this post the book coming out, buying the book on Amazon, and a week later having like 40 highlights in it and pen, like I know I'm up to something. The two books that have, you know, Crush It, which really put me on the map, right? You know, that book and Jab, 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 Right Hook, they, it acted differently than the other books. All my books have done well. They've all been New York Times bestsellers, but I'm still getting emails about, you know, Jab, 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 Right Hook, even though a lot of the content is not as timely. And so I felt like I needed to do the updated version and mm. the more advanced version. But still, I've always been the kind of communicator that's more of the average Joe. So because I record my books, Mm -hmm. in audio form, I don't think I'm gonna lose people in the 301-ness, and so I'm excited, I'm really excited about it. 